Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run for the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days so we are going to see some fairly decent summery conditions over the next three or four days it's not going to be blisteringly hot but temperatures into the low to mid 20s and we are going to see lots of drier weather now this is because we have got a flat westerly but the jet stream is mainly positioned over northern parts of the United Kingdom if not over towards the north of Scotland out in the Atlantic Ocean. Now that means that yes it's a fresher westerly flow but it is high pressure dominated which means that it is fairly dry. However as we head into next week in around four or five days time we'll have a look at, it, uh, look at it a little bit on the UKV but mainly the longer range runs the GFS, GM and ECMWF. It is looking like it could go really quite unsettled and perhaps even stormy especially for this time of year as we have spoken about numerous times this past week storm Ernesto is currently out in the north atlantic heading past bermuda and it is going to get caught up in the jet stream and just inject a lot of energy uh, tightening the isobars uh, essentially means we're going to see lots more rain and some very strong winds at the moment it looks mainly focused in the north and the west uh, with the jet stream still positioned slightly further northwards but it is still going to be pretty impactful uh, quite widely and it is going to have lots of temperature swings and lots of changes in winds as well. So we'll look at that in the second half of the video. So do remember, if you enjoy the videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now if you start on the live radar, you can see this kind of exemplary pattern of the jet stream slightly further northwards. As you can see, the main bulk of any rain is to the north of Scotland. We do have a few showers around. It is a westerly flow, so we do have moisture in the air. And we are going to see showers popping up and that is going to continue over the coming days but it is widely drier you can see there is a little cut off load that has developed across europe and here we're seeing lots of heavy rain and thunderstorms luckily this low is positioned further southwards and we are under the outstretched area of higher pressure now do put on the temperatures you see it's nothing special today it is warm in the east temperatures here mid 20s maybe 25 26 at best but nothing particularly special it's just fairly decent summery conditions inevitably the further north and west which you go with the stronger westerly flow closer to that cooler north atlantic air it is going to be chillier that's just the nature of this pattern uh, but even there it's not too bad especially when it is dry now do over to the latest UKV, you can see over the coming days it is going to remain this with this westerly flow. There will be showers at times but nothing too bad through Sunday, equally into Monday. A bit of heavier rain starting to move in for northern and western areas as the unsettled conditions start to try and make a return. But in the south and east it's not too bad, that quickly moves through and for the rest of Tuesday showers around but nothing too bad. And then as into Wednesday we start to see a kind of big pattern change lots more heavy rain you can see it's not just pushing through it's stalling further north to westwards as we start to see some really deep low pressure systems starting to arrive so yeah it could be unsettled through monday in parts but it's especially wednesday thursday that's where it could be turning a lot windier as well now if you look at the sea level pressure you can see look flat westerly wind high pressure to our south keeping things fairly dry that continues as we head into Monday, however, we do see a little tilt in those isobars as, as a low pressure system does start to arrive. It's not terribly deep, around a thousand millibars there towards that center, that little kink, so nothing too bad. Uh, but again, could be some heavy rain associated with it. But it's really towards Wednesday and Thursday where we do start to see much tighter isobars. You can see down in the southeast, 1,018 millibars to the north of Scotland, down towards 990. So even though we've not got a direct impact from a low pressure system yet, because that is soon to come in the following days, you can already see the very tight isobars starting to appear and things starting to turn a lot more unsettled into the latter part of the week. You can see the upper air temperatures oscillating a lot. You see quite a big warm sector pushing in here. That is pretty symbolic of these quite strong low pressure systems. It's always going to have big warm sectors and big cool sectors. That's fueling that low. And that's what we're seeing here come Thursday. Again, we'll get a much better view uh, on the GFS and GM East and in a minute. But yeah, turning pretty bad 
towards the latter part of the working week. You can see wind gusts not too bad over the coming days, some breezier conditions, but nothing more than 20 or 30 miles per hour gusts at the worst of times. Monday, slightly higher wind gusts when the rain band moves through Monday night, but nothing too bad. But it's really Wednesday into Thursday where we start seeing more widespread oranges starting to appear. Again, just signs of the deteriorating conditions with that unsettled stormy patterns starting to arrive. We must remember a stormy pattern in the summer is different to a stormy pattern in February. We've got full leaf on the trees, so winds are more impactful. Um, and of course, we don't expect stormy weather this time of year, so we're not really prepared for it. Um, therefore, uh, it could be more impactful in certain areas. We'll have to wait and see how uh, it does play out. But yeah, it could be turning pretty horrible towards the latter part of the next working week. If you look at the temperatures, you can see this afternoon temperatures peaking and said low to mid 20s into tomorrow. It's fairly similar, 23 to maybe 25 into Monday. Again, slightly warmer, 25 or 26. That's ahead of that rain. So if you see that rain moving through a bit earlier, it won't be this warm. But if we do see it move through uh, quite uh, a bit faster, then hopefully we do see these temperatures. Uh, uh, sorry, if we see it move through a bit faster, then these temperatures won't really be there at all. So we'll have to wait and see the exact timings for that. And then into Tuesday, a bit cooler, but still warm in the east, which hold on to that warmer air. And Wednesday, starting to cool down from the northwest as we all start to see that westerly foe pushing in. Even though we have fairly warm upper air temperatures by this point, with those strong winds, rain and clouds starting to push in, it will likely turn a bit, quite a bit cooler over the coming 24 hours beyond that. So do have a look at those long range picture. We'll be able to have, have a much better idea of these storm systems over the next couple of days as they do get into time frame of the shorter range runs. But we'll still have to continue to look at these longer range runs uh, as that's kind of our best uh, best estimates for now. You can see Wesley flow at the moment but with decent high pressure. We do see that little kink in the ice of ours there for one day into Tuesday. That's giving us our heavy rain. But you see nothing too bad. Can see Storm Ernesto by Monday is across parts of Newfoundland up towards northeast Canada, and then it really starts to take off in the jet stream and starts to bring in some really quite stormy patterns arriving for Thursday into Friday. Look at those really deep lows and very tight isobars spiraling around that area of low pressure. Now, fortunately, one thing we have highlighted over the past few days is it doesn't look like it's going to be terribly long lived, maybe two or three days. Uh, maybe slightly longer with maybe a secondary low but for most it is going to be quite horrible quite stormy but only for those few days before eventually we see more high pressure returning not complete high pressure dominance but high pressure returning giving more varied conditions for 384 hours another pretty strong low developing there 384 hours but nothing too terrible uh, at this stage and you see it actually does draw up some very warm air ahead of it so have to wait and see uh, but for the time being turning pretty unsettled and stormy from maybe thursday timings is still a little bit iffy at this stage but around thursday turning a lot more unsettled for a good few days and said so could be very windy and very rainy in places if you compare to the latest gem again we've got westerly winds at the moment but high pressure still in control in the south by monday we get a brief low pressure system moving through it does look fairly deep but it's not anything too horrendous but it is as I said really that thursday system where we've got much tighter ISO bars there moving through into saturday the one thing i'll note is that the pressure doesn't drop as low here on Thursday. We've still got tight isobars, so still stronger winds, but the pressure isn't quite as low, so I wouldn't expect this area of low pressure to be as severe. You can see that with the rainfall. It isn't as severe as it moves through, and that's because that system isn't as developed. So again, have to keep a close eye on it. Winds still look fairly gusty and fairly strong. Look at those oranges moving in. Those are strong winds, but just not particularly severe overall with this low. As you can see, we're still under oranges at the pressure level, uh, which indicates that um, the pressure doesn't actually drop terribly low, even though the isobars are fairly tight. The main bulk of the low remaining further northwards. Towards day 10, similar patterns to the GFS, we do see a return of higher pressure, but it's not completely dominant, it's just not as persistently unsettled as the few days later next working week. 
Now do look at the latest ECMWF to see what that is showing today. Again, a westerly flow at the moment. Low, uh, low pressure arriving for a time on Monday. Brief high pressure for Tuesday, Wednesday. And then we start to see those lows spinning up for later next week. And we see a really big low developing there for Sasso. That looks pretty... Pretty severe there for Scotland. If we do zoom in, the millibar, uh, the pressure level going down towards I think, 964 millibars, it looks like there. Very strong winds would be expected. Those sustained winds are very strong. And also looking at lots of very heavy rain. So, yeah, quite a strong system moving there through Saturday into Sunday. Again, mainly affecting northern and western areas, but still stronger winds and heavy rain as we saw elsewhere. But eventually it does clear and we do see some high pressure building back in towards day 10. So yes, does look like it could go pretty horrible for a time. The remnants of Storm and Esther is going to power up the jet stream for a few days. But it is not a pattern change. We're not going to be seeing this persist throughout the rest of August. It will arrive. It will be here for two, three, maybe four days before it does start to die out. And we see high pressure make a return. And the fact that it's being mainly driven by the remnants of Storm Ernesto means that any subtle differences, any changes in the forecast of Ernesto out in the North Atlantic will have knock-on effects to what we're going to see as well. So that's why I am sceptical of the runs because we are likely to see changes, especially if the track and severity of Ernesto the next day or two changes or, is a little, or deviates a little bit from the forecast. So we will have to wait and see. We won't really have a definitive answer on the exact positioning, its exact intensity and timings of any stormy conditions, probably until Monday, Tuesday, uh, really at the earliest. And that's just because of the uncertainty with the track of Ernesto. Once it reaches the jet stream, gets picked up by the jet stream, then the forecast will be fairly decent. But while it's still in the North Atlantic, while it's still a hurricane, uh, getting fueled by the very warm seas, anything can really happen to its track, and any subtle changes can knock, uh, have big knock-on effects to what we are seeing. Now, if you look at the ensemble, this gives us a kind of a breadth of different outcomes. Can see for London, big up and down changes later next week, and that is fairly consistent with a very unsettled pattern. What we normally say during the winter is a zonal sine wave. Because if you imagine a sine wave, it goes up and down, up and down. And that's what we're seeing here as we switch between warm sector, cool sector, warm sector, cool sector, as we do have multiple lows uh, consecutively pushing over top of us. And that's what we're seeing here. So again, it does follow on fairly good from our assertion that we are going to be seeing very unsettled, low pressure after low pressure arriving for about three or four days. Precipitation isn't massive, though. And that means that although we are going to see further southwards, those changes in temperature, we're going to see some rain and we're going to see stronger winds. Uh, if we do put on those winds here, we are going to see winds picking up. It's not going to be horrendous because the main centre of the low, the main bulk of the rain is further north and westwards. So you see here, winds look most of the time three uh, sorry, 30 to 40 metres per second. Nothing too bad. But then into the next week we're looking at six seven here eight so 60 70 80 meters per second which is much much stronger and these are sustained winds here so yeah not looking great even for areas in the southeast like london which are going to be mainly sheltered from the most severe conditions if you compare it further north it's the glasgow much more in terms of spikes with those winds if we put on the upper air temperatures a lot more in the way of heavy rain there especially later next week and of course sea level pressure dropping quite a bit more and you can see some really low runs appearing there which are more direct hits i think the most likely pattern is for the main center of any lows to stay offshore but a few runs as we can see here bringing in the main center of those low pressure systems around five six days time and that's where we're getting those 969, oh sorry, 979, 80 millibars. So we'll have to wait and see exactly with this. But you can see that the ensembles here have got quite a bit a big margin of uncertainty. And it does look like mainly northern and western areas will be affected. And if you do compare finally to the ECMWF, very similar. High precipitation for Glasgow and generally Scotland here. Up and down precipitation, uh, up and down temperature, sorry. Very similar 
in terms of temperature for London, very up and down, but nowhere near as much precipitation. And that is, as I said, because the most intense conditions are going to be north and westwards, closer to the sources of moisture and closer to the centre of the low. But I will, I will emphasise that it is still going to be windy further southwards. It is still going to have periods of rain and there could be some very heavy rain, uh, all dependent on the positioning of those lows. So as I said, we'll have to wait and see exactly how it does play out. But yeah, it could be some pretty stormy conditions later next working week. So if you have got plans, make sure you keep up to date with the forecast. Wouldn't be surprised to see some wind warnings issued. Don't think any named storms will be issued. It doesn't look like we're looking at any massive individual system that is going to cause severe impacts. It's just more the fact that it's three or four days of unseasonably unsettled uh, stormy conditions, not just one singular system. Uh, again, we have seen named storms for large areas of life lower pressure with multiple little mother uh, daughter lows within it we'll have to wait and see but from the latest runs i do think this is just going to be a stormy spell not any name storms within this but still definitely uh, a good chance that we do see some yellow warnings issued but as i said we'll uh, have a look at that nearer the time so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video soon